Hmm. If you think about it, we love concepts like the Sorcerer's Stone, the Fountain of Youth, and, okay, vampires, for one common reason. We all want to know how it would be to have everlasting life. Some researchers argue that there's no limit to how long we can live. The No Limit Camp argues that as long as we keep making scientific advancements and taking care of ourselves, we could potentially live forever, or until you spend down your savings. Meanwhile, the finite lifespan fellas say that our bodies have a built-in expiration date, and there's only so much we can do to push it back. A study suggests that the maximum human lifespan may be around 150 years. The researchers analyzed data about the world's oldest individuals over the past few decades, and concluded that there is an expiration date for our lives. Overall, the study provides new insights into the limits of the human lifespan and may help guide future research into the biology of aging and the development of new treatments for age-related diseases. So, let's hypothesize that we can actually push the inevitable end off as long as possible. What if we live for 300 years? In this way, we would still be stuck with a finite lifespan, but it wouldn't be too short. Living forever may not be as appealing because we don't want to reach a point where we get so bored and wish to have a finite life. Living for 300 years would significantly impact every aspect of life. I'll start with the concept of aging and how we perceive it. I know being young and old is subjective, but we are thought of as middle-aged at around 50 years old in our current lifespan. If our lifespan triples, at 50 years old, we might be considered a teenager. Since we have more than two centuries to live, it's like every minute we had suddenly became three minutes long. When we hit the age of 30, we feel like it's a milestone and that one-third of our life is over. But with a longer lifespan, we wouldn't experience this feeling until we reach the age of 100. Here, the critical aspect is whether we are going to keep the same biological and emotional capacity or not. Normally, our adolescent brain continues to develop and doesn't reach full maturity until approximately 25 to 30 years of age. In my scenario, this notion will remain the same. Yet, we will probably go to school for a more extended period and learn a whole bunch of new things. Time to speak new languages. How about organ replacement and AI lectures? The education system and curriculum will indeed be changed. We would have more time to read and learn. You get your diploma, or you don't pursue higher education and spare that time to master a skill, like being a carpenter. Now you need to earn money. Ah, I'm sure that concept won't change. Let's find you a job. You probably have different options to choose from, and retirement might not be necessary until much later in life. In this way, you might have extra time to explore different careers and interests. Pursue your goals, take risks, and develop your career. Let's talk about relationships. Oh, we now have situationships, open relationships, and so on. I can't imagine the new dynamics we would have in a longer life. The age of marriage and the decision to start a family will all transform. Family structures and roles would change to accommodate these longer lifespans. You'd be grandparents, maybe at the age of 230. Yet, it could turn into a magical experience. We could have even deeper bonds. Imagine you've got centuries to hang out with your best friend. We would have more time to get to know each other and explore our common interests. It's not just us who got to experience the trial version of eternity. The world's resources would be affected too. We would have much longer lives to reproduce. We either overpopulate the globe or keep our existing family member numbers and become underpopulated. If we overpopulate, we'll have to fight for resources. This can quickly turn into a dystopian book. You know what? I really like this idea. I could try writing a book in my three centuries long alternative life. Anyway, it's not just the resources. Ecosystems, animals, and plants would all be affected by us. Hopefully, we'll find new ways to prevent or recover from these problems. How do we solve these issues, you might ask? By advances in science and technology. We would have more time to devote to research and development. We will explore the unknown territories of our planet and universe via science and technology. This could lead to breakthroughs in medicine, energy, transportation, and other fields. I mean, think of astrophysics. We could even find ways to travel to other planets. 
Since our lifespan is extended, astronauts may complete presumably impossible expeditions. In our hypothetical situation, we'd age at a slower pace. Since we don't wake up one day and start living till 300, medical improvements should be responsible for providing a longer life for us. New treatments and interventions would be there to help people live healthier. Healthcare policies and practices will change too. Good luck to health insurance companies and life insurance. Now, let's talk wellness. People would likely place a greater emphasis on maintaining their mental well-being too. Surely, we would have great memories and enjoy life. But there'll be hard times too. New wellness methods might be seen. As a social science field, psychology might also find new ways to shed light on the human psyche. Plus, we would have more time to see the world and explore new horizons. This would help us enjoy life more. So, bon voyage! Next up, we have the economy. It's one of the most important areas that'll be affected by our longer lifespan. It could potentially result in a larger workforce and more accumulated wealth over time. Or it could lead to a higher demand for resources, like food and housing. Then the states have to be involved to keep the balance and help people meet their needs. Finance, the economy, and everyday life have to find new ways to coexist. If we had a chance to see 2323, maybe we wouldn't use paper money and coins but move on to a completely digital system. But hey, we already have that right now. Think of PayPal, debit cards, and the like. It's all digital. But I digress. Art and culture. Think of your favorite writer or director. What if they had decades more to produce amazing art pieces? What about physiology and sociology? Try to picture the new ideas and schools that will come. Such a drastic change in the lifespan would also result in a fundamental shift in the intellectual sense. It alters the way we think and spend our time. It changes resources and our entire interpretation of life. This change can lead to a shift in the way we consume products, such as clothes. Have you heard of the term quiet luxury? It refers to high-quality and subtly stylish items that are expensive. It's associated with the popular HBO series Succession. Quiet luxury brands are only recognizable to those who are in the know, and they're appreciated for their refined aesthetics that go beyond their price tags. The trend of conspicuous logos and branding is starting to decrease for the consumers of these products. Maybe in the future, there'll be times when people have found ways to truly embrace a fashion style that merges sustainability, accessibility, and the great look all together. An average American will meet 10,000 people in their lifetime. That's a lot of people, y'all! Now let's do some math. Out of those 10,000 people we meet, How many will we make an impact on? If we're lucky, maybe 25? That doesn't sound too impressive, does it? But even the smallest act of kindness can create a ripple effect that changes the course of someone's life. And when you add up all those little acts of kindness, they can make a world of difference. If we live for an additional 200 years, this number will surely increase. Personally, I'm a member of the team YOLO – you only live once. Why not make the most of it? Me? Well, I really don't want to live for hundreds of years if I can't bring my dog with me. The hardest thing on the planet is to get out of a warm bed early in the morning. The second most challenging thing in the world is to sit in an office and force yourself to start working. It's hard to read a big book and cook your own food. It's almost impossible to earn a lot of money. Do sports? It's something fantastic. Keeping a dog at home and walking it several times a day is just senseless. How do people live this tough life? Almost every day, Lewis thinks about these things, and he is the laziest person in the world who loves only one thing, watching TV series and movies. So, one day, he wakes up in a 2D flat body. The volume of his muscles and bones has decreased by almost 99%. He can't turn off the alarm because his body is too thin and barely emits heat. Under the loud ringing of sirens, he tries to pull off the blanket, but it's too heavy. Lewis crawls out of bed. He looks at himself in the mirror in horror, stands sideways, and becomes almost invisible. He tries to scream, but his voice sounds like a mosquito squeak. 
The fridge door is as heavy as the door in a bank vault. An apple on the table weighs like a barbell. Lewis needs to go to the toilet, but can't press the handle. Fortunately, he's thin enough to squeeze through the gap between the door and the wall. He has to go to work, but he has to eat something first. He sees the breadcrumbs he hasn't cleaned up from last night's dinner. He picks up and swallows a couple of them. His stomach is super small now, so two tiny crumbs seem as heavy as two plates of spaghetti. Now he needs to drink some water. All the bottles are closed, and he doesn't have the strength to unscrew the lids. Fortunately, water is dripping from the tap. Lewis drinks just one drop, but feels like he's had two cans of soda. He leaves the house, runs across the road, and gets under a car. Our guy is invisible to the driver because he's standing sideways. But thanks to his light weight, Lewis doesn't get any damage. He flies off to the side, but he can't land anymore. The wind blows and lifts Lewis up. He tries to hold on to the lamp posts and traffic lights, but his thin hands are too weak. The wind is taking him higher and higher. Lewis flies past the birds and the top floors. The temperature is getting too cold for his body. He freezes, but the wind changes its direction and takes him down. Someone throws a banana peel out the window. Lewis grabs it and uses it to descend safely. He finally reaches the road and ties the banana peel to his laces. He's walking slowly, since it's hard. The peel seems as heavy as a cart loaded with bricks. He crosses the street and falls every time people push him on the shoulder. Lewis screams back at them, but they don't even hear him. Exhausted, he gets to his office. The boss scolds Lewis for being late. Lewis's tiny ears are now sensitive to all sound waves, so the boss's words seem very loud and low, as if they come from a large speaker. The boss doesn't care that Lewis is flat. He wants all the work done. Lewis tries to take a stack of papers, but it's too heavy, so he moves one sheet at a time to his desk. Each page weighs like 10 skateboards for him. Lewis moves three documents and feels like he's run a marathon. Then he sits at the computer, but the keyboard doesn't work. The keys don't get enough load. Lewis has to put a lot of effort into printing something. It's the end of the day, and Lewis has done only 1% of all the work. He comes to the office kitchen, sees a delicious sandwich, but can't bite it off completely. He breaks off tiny pieces of salad and bread. It makes him full. He notices that his hair is covered with frost. An icicle is growing on the tip of his nose. Why has the ice age begun in the office? Oh, it's just the air conditioner lowered the temperature by one degree. But our hero is sensitive to the slightest fluctuations in the air. Exhausted, he leaves the office and enters the elevator. A crowd of people presses him from all sides. A drop of sweat from one guy's neck falls right on Lewis. Like a sheet of paper, he absorbs almost the entire drop. The elevator doors open and Lewis gets out quickly. He runs out into the street. The wind is pretty strong, but the banana peel keeps him on the ground. It starts to rain. Just a few drops fall on the ground, but Lewis gets soaked through. Seconds later, Lewis feels like he's standing under a waterfall. It's hard to walk. He unhooks the peel and falls exhausted to the ground. He wakes up a couple of hours later. The sun is shining through the clouds. Lewis is completely dry. He feels like he's in the middle of a desert. He tries to raise his hand, but his skin is so dry that it hurts. At this moment, a street dog approaches him. It licks Lewis from head to toe. He stands up, pets the dog, and goes home. The animal follows him. He squeezes into the apartment under the door and falls into bed. The next morning, the alarm clock sounds too loud. Lewis tries to turn it off and feels terrible pain all over his body. His muscles got a huge load yesterday. Lewis wants to scream, but he can't, so he cries. He's terrified that he literally can't do anything. He spends several days in bed and gets up only to use the bathroom and to fill his stomach with breadcrumbs and tap water. At some point, he realizes he can no longer live like this. 
he misses ordinary food, delicious drinks, and a normal lifestyle. He decides to work out. Every day he does push-ups, squats, and pull-ups. His muscles are not so thin anymore. And now, after two months of hard training, he can lift up the laptop lid. At work, he carries three sheets of paper to his desk at a time and can type 200 words a day. He reads every document and understands that his job isn't that boring and pointless. The boss notices Lewis is motivated and raises his salary. Our hero tears off small pieces of vegetables and ham from other people's sandwiches, but he believes that he will cook his own sooner or later. Every day, the dog accompanies him from home to work. When the wind is strong, he grabs onto its fur. He's strong enough to unlock the door again, which means he can let the dog inside his house. Daily workouts and perseverance make Lewis happy. He feels better than at the time he had a normal body. An active lifestyle inspires Lewis to read more books. It turns out that literature is exciting. And so, one day, he wakes up in 3D. He feels like a superhero, ready to become the best chef in the world, earn a lot of money, and win an Olympic medal in any sport. He can do anything. Why didn't he appreciate it before? Now, life seems fascinating and full of meaning. But now, he's about to turn on the laptop to start watching a new TV show. One episode first, and all the achievements later, he thinks. Lewis used to put a lot of effort into opening the lid when he was in 2D. So now, he accidentally breaks the computer. Good for him. He realizes that it was a laziness trap. You work in a large nature reserve that's home to more than a thousand species of animals. At night, you drive through the territory in a jeep to see if everything's okay. Most of the animals are sleeping. Suddenly, you hear the monkeys screaming. They jump from branch to branch. A herd of horses runs out of the forest. They look worried too. You hear many animals crying. Looks like some unknown strange thing has woken up and horrified the whole reserve. You see a flash in the night sky. It's a meteorite, and it's flying right towards you. You get in the car, hit the gas, and drive away as far as possible. The space rock falls right in front of you and throws your vehicle to the side. You pass out. The fallen meteorite emits some strange yellow energy. You're inside an overturned car, unconscious. All the animals have calmed down. Thousands of them silently approach the meteorite. Its energy envelops you and all the animals around. The more energy comes out, the smaller the space stone becomes. By the morning, the meteorite dissolves in the air. It has absorbed the animal powers and passed them on to you. You wake up in the grass near the car, surrounded by several people. These are the reserve employees and some guys in black suits. They study the crater in the ground and ask you what happened. You tell them about the meteorite and they order you to go with them. One of them grabs you tightly by the shoulder. You don't like it and you want to break out. Two men in black are holding you. You get angry and feel your muscles increase and your skin becomes covered with fur. You quickly push the men away and roar. Your nails have turned into claws. You've received a bear's powers. Now you're just as strong and fierce. Agents in black are following you. You run away into the forest. You want to be faster and feel your spine changing its shape. Now you're running very fast on all fours. You've got the power of a cheetah, the fastest animal on Earth. You're hiding in the forest. The agents are far behind you. You hear a helicopter from above. It shines a bright spotlight beam. Oh no, they've noticed you. Agents use a megaphone to ask you to stop. But you know what awaits you. Labs, experiments, life in a cage. You've seen a lot of movies about it, so you won't just give up. You run out of the forest. They release darts at you. You quickly run to a large lake and dive inside. Webbing has grown on your arms and legs. Your feet are like flippers. Your legs fuse into one big tail. And you are now a walrus. You quickly swim across the lake and come ashore on the other side. Several cars and motorcycles are circling the lake to catch up with you. There's another forest ahead. But this time, it's too dense. 
there's not enough space to develop great speed. But you can get the strength of a monkey. Your hands get longer, and your fingers become stronger. You jump up a tree, climb to the top, and inspect the reserve. You need to go south and get to a small town to eat and drink. After a couple of hours, you reach the reserve's border. Now you have to jump over a high fence. Your legs are getting strong. You jump like a kangaroo, but it's not high enough. You fall to the ground. The helicopter catches up to you. You get lizard powers. You get sticky scales on your palms. You quickly climb the concrete wall and jump to the other side. You find yourself in the tall grass. Agents are coming to you from all sides. You're thinking about a snake. Your arms and legs fuse with your body. Now you can crawl. You pass all. Your legs and arms turn into hooves. You're jumping up a cliff like a mountain goat. They can't get you here. But at that moment, the helicopter appears again. The agent is aiming a dart at you. Needles are growing on your back. You've got porcupine powers. You release a couple of needles into the agent. It distracts him for a few minutes. At this moment, a cougar jumps at you out of nowhere. It scratches you with its claws. You think about a lion and get its powers. You get on your back feet and growl loudly. The cougar gets scared and runs away. <laughs> 